You see those welds? Not good. You see these welds? Definitely not good. Truss, double stack the welds. Tab's too short, add some weld. All right, nothing going on in there. So one of our good customers bought this uh, LJ I'm working on. He bought it from a guy who probably brought it to a guy who didn't really know what he was doing. You see those welds? Not good, but they'll hold. You see these welds? Definitely not good, but they'll probably hold. Truss, double stack the welds, that helps. Tab's too short, add some weld, works every time. You come over here, you see the back of the truss? Not welded very well, but it might hold. And then we come over here. You got the wrong spacing, add about six washers. You know, that's that's regulation. It's, uh, it's tight in there, I think we're good. And uh, if you come over here, we got a shock. Pretty shocking stuff. This shock, uh, pretty stiff. No, I'm just messing with you. All right, nothing going on in there. You know, that's like a uh, preschooler's brain. There's about two brain cells, they're fighting for third place and nobody's winning. Huh? So, we're continuing teardown on this Jeep, as you've just seen. That side, not a big deal. Bolt was put in the right way. In my new favorite words from our all-knowing boss, somebody had their fair share of sandwiches this day because I think they welded this link mount on with the heim bolted in because as you can see, that bolt ain't coming out. So, I've employed my favorite tool here and we're gonna make the head of that bolt go bye-bye and then we're gonna make the bolt go bye-bye and then we're all gonna be good. Crap, you were filming that. Jeeps, everybody wants one but not everybody knows how to build them. And this is a perfect example. Well, not anymore. This was a perfect example of someone who did not know how to build a Jeep. When this thing came in, the welds on the front, not good. All the heims in there, they had misalignments, but wrong spacing, throw five washers on either side, you're good. The geometry was surprisingly actually pretty good, but it had FOA shocks in there, had no oil in them, spring rates were completely off, the, uh, Misalignments for the shocks, you don't need those. Those weren't in there. Just tighten the bolt till it cinches it in there. I mean, two inches up travel, didn't flex right, didn't really work right. So the guy just bought it, paid a pretty penny for it, realized all this stuff wasn't great, brought it into us and we made her better. So we kept his axles. You wouldn't believe if you've seen the pictures of what this thing looked like before versus what it looks like now. Fixed all that up, threw some air bumps in there, gave him some good, nice shocks. We got the Rad Flow 2.0 by 14 inch front and rear. Give him plenty of travel. Same shock that he had in there dimension wise, just something with oil in it and valving and all the things that a shock's supposed to do, like absorb shock. Got rid of all his towers, brackets, everything. So everything's new up front. We got our link mounts, our track bar bracket, our low profile truss for the Ford Kingpin axles. Got our limit straps in there. Actually the cross member that was in there, wasn't too bad. I don't believe that was done by the same guy that built this because either he learned on everything else and did the cross member right or somebody else did it. Slotty wise, it's got the sliders on there, it's got the fenders, it's not terrible, but the suspension was awful. So we got done at the front, called him up, said, hey man, what's your budget looking like? And he says, well, do the rear because the rear was arguably worse than the front. So we left the truss on there because it's, it's on there, it ain't coming off. Did some bump pads, Put the bumps on the frame here. Those are uh, rad flow bumps to match the socks. Same shocks in the rear. That's a, a 2014. Put the right spring rate in there so this thing's, you know, it's actually got the right valving, the right spring rates. Um, and if you come back here, we have his old shocks in here. Um, as you can see, they're a little crusty. Um, a little hard to tell on camera, but they're all beat up from not having the right misalignments in there. There were brackets hitting the coil retainers. Um, we got his old links. If you zoom in on there, you can see the welds were not the best. I mean, obviously there's, we've had worse, but not bad. Did his own weld it yourself diff covers. And uh, typically they don't need RTV on the inside where you're supposed to weld, but there was, and it was still leaking. Um, oh, new cover. This isn't the new one, but it says it is. So check that out. But yeah, you can see the welds on there weren't the best. I think the guy was learning. Give him some credit, you know. He got out there in the garage and went for it, but it was leaking through the welds, so we put some new diff covers on there. We got our WFO covers that just kind of spruce everything up, give it the look that we like and the look that he wanted. But yeah, I mean, we've had this thing flexed out. I've been driving it around a little bit, make sure everything's good. 
Drives great. Uh, didn't have sway bars on it, front or rear. Uh, so we have a TerraFlex in the front with the disconnect and an anti rock that's full time in the rear. Drives great on the street. I'm genuinely very surprised with how this thing drives based on how it came in. If you built the rig or someone else built the rig and you bought it and it doesn't look the best, bring it on in. We'll give her the same treatment. Drive like brand new. Look like this. Don't learn to weld on your own rig like this. Do it on the bench. How long can I stare at the sun?